I look at it like the the setup point of this fight is very simple. You got two fight you got two fighters out there who are willing to fight, who are willing to exchange, um, shed blood, and as they say, die in the ring. Who desperately need wins? You got Brandon Rios, thirty-two and two and one. No, thirty-two, two and one, twenty-three KOs. He weighed in at one forty-six, uh, three quarters. You got Mike Alvarado, thirty-four and three with twenty-three KOs, weighing in at one forty-six point five on T Street Controversy with RealCombatMedia.com. I cover every single major fight live. Mike Alvarado is in a situation where I feel he needs to win more. Look at his last three fights. In fact, look at his last look at his last five fights. He was one of the last people outside of Kareem Mayfield to defeat Mauricio Herrera cleanly. He um, had two fights with Brandon Rios, went one and two. The one knockout loss he had was somewhat controversial, but still, I think it was valid. He went on to fight Ruslan Pavotnikov, and my God, you know what happened with that. And then he went up to fight, and then he went back up. No, he went up to 147 pounds, where he's more natural at, and he looked good at the weigh-in today. You know, like, really, he looked good at the weigh-in to fight Juan Manuel Marquez, and we all know how that went, even though he did go to distance. So you got to think, if he loses to Brandon Rios with this with this gun charge that he has and this recent string of um, arrests that he's had over the last several months, you have to ask, well, where does he go from here? So looking at Brandon Rios, when you look at, well, he was on his way to very well losing or could have lost four straight fights or most recently Diego Chavez, Manny Pacquiao and um, and um, Mike Alvarado. So basically he was on his way to losing Diego Chavez fight until that fight got stopped. He said he was going to come back but those are one of those fights where you just don't know what fighting Diego Chavez and you learned that when he fought Timothy Bradley. So looking at the fight as a whole what are you going to see? You're going to see blood you're going to see war. And, and realistically, that's all it's really for outside of the fact that that belt you see them holding. You know what that belt is? That's a belt that they made up for Pacquiao versus Brandon Rios. And then what happened is that belt made Pacquiao the number one contender for Timothy Bradley. Just so happened Mike Alvarado and um, Juan Manuel Marquez just fought for that belt too because Bob Arum at the WBO was trying to set Marquez up to fight Pacquiao again. So listen to what I'm saying. That WBO belt is called the WBO Intercontinentalist Belt or some old crap like that. It's a brand new belt and it's not even two years old yet. But what they were using it for is basically, okay, well, you win, you become the number one contender for this. So, long story short, you would think that, well, wait a minute, isn't, this, isn't Saddam Ali the number one contender for 147? Long story short, it shows some confusion and it shows a little bit of dab of corruption in the, um, in the WBO. But then again, all these boxing organizations are corrupt. So, looking at the fight itself, looking at the way in, both fighters look good. Honestly, that was the best I've seen Mike Alvarado look in quite some time. And I'm thinking to myself, with all the crap that's been going on in his life, I have to think, well, is this a time when he's going to turn it on and say, okay, listen, I know i got to win this fight. i got to be the fighter that people always thought I was going to be before I took that first defeat. And i got to become a boxer, and i gotta be, I got to stay the boxer and not get mixed up with the bullshit. Because he's a good boxer when he decides to box. And when his head is in the and, his, and when his head is in the fight, but then outside of that, you know, if he starts getting mixed up with trading with you, especially um, make, mixing up with a uh, Brendan Reels, I understand that he hasn't had any stoppages, you know, um, since he's left the 135 pound division. But you know, outside of um, Mike Alvarado, was kind of questionable. Still, looking at Reels, he is not the type of guy you want to sit there in front of because for one. He's going to take everything you've got to give to him, and then you got to take everything you got to give, everything he's got to give to you. So, therefore, Brenda Rios has never been knocked out, but Mike Alvarado twice. And then Mike Alvarado's face get, just gets beat to shit, whereas in um, Brandon Rios, he, he gets beat up, but he's a little more um, durable, if that makes sense. But what I'm going to do is this. Listen, I'm T-Street Controversy on Twitter, T-Street Controversy on Instagram, T-Street Controversy on Facebook. I got a T-Street Controversy like page. Of course, T-Street Controversy on RailCombatMedia.com. And I cover every single major fight live. I go to weigh-ins. I cover weigh-ins. I go to fights. I cover fights. Predictions, press conferences, everything related to boxing. And also, what I'm going to be doing is basically a little, a little beta test, basically. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be doing a Google Hangout live streaming before the fight. So I would say about two hours before the event starts, I'm going to be, I'm going to be doing a live streaming video, um, basically pre-fight analysis, prediction, 
and then we're going to be talking about, talking about news throughout the week. I mean, news that's happened throughout the week and in the past. And basically, we're going to, we basically, we're just going to debate and we're going to talk. The reason why I'm rushing is because I'm trying to get to the Reading Terminal before they close. It's a Philly thing. But anyway, T Street Controversy. Please subscribe. T Street Controversy.